for giving me a lot more credit uh, as an individual than I deserve um, for ATBG's endorsement. But um, thought I'd just start um, by um, saying a little bit about 32BJ and who we are. Um, first of all, I'm Allison Hirsch, and I'm really honored to be here today. So thank you very much for uh, including me and inviting me to speak. Um, I've been at 32BJ for about 12 years. And um, as Adam said, we are a labor union. We represent 185,000 members in uh, 12 states, from New Hampshire south to Virginia, and then in Florida, and Washington, DC, and also in Kentucky, 12 states in the District of Columbia. Our members are primarily building service workers. So they're the folks who clean your offices after you leave at night. They're there overnight to make sure that your offices are, are you know, nice and livable and healthy. Um, we have the folks in New York who are the doormen, the porters, residential workers, airport workers, um, the wheelchair pushers at the airport, the folks who clean the planes, clean the terminals, security officers, make sure our buildings are safe when we go in and out of our buildings, um, government buildings, commercial office buildings, et cetera. In Kentucky, there's school employees, um, school custodians across the East Coast and Kentucky. If you ever go to Kentucky and go to a distillery, our folks are the ones who clean the distilleries. Um, smelly but interesting job. Um, and so, and our members are incredibly diverse. The 185,000 members of 32BJ come from, uh, speak 25 different languages. 60% of our members are new immigrants. Um, primarily people of color, though not entirely, and re really broken down a relatively equitable distribution between uh, men and women, although in the cleaning sector it's a much higher uh, population of women. And we're the folks who are the low-wage workers, who are the what we often call the invisible workforce, who, if it weren't for the labor union, would be making minimum wage jobs and um, working four or five part-time jobs instead of the kind of job the union allows for because of the organizing of these workers, which are decent family-sustaining wages, full family benefits, access to training funds, legal funds, et cetera. So why do we care about the Green New Deal? We care about the Green New Deal because, you know, as I said, our members clean office buildings. And if you think about the cities in which we work, New York City, Miami, you know, these are cities that are, you know, bearing the brunt of climate change all the time, even though that's not who we think about as workers who are impacted by climate change. We think about the coal workers in Kentucky or our folks in western rural, western Pennsylvania, but when you're talking about urban centers, you know, our folks are impacted by climate change as well. And in cities like New York City, I think 70% of the carbon footprint uh, that comes out of New York City comes out of the building stock. And so we started working with our members and our employers in about 2006 to retrain our members and provide a training program for what we call the Green Supers program, for our members to learn how to uh, manage and maintain buildings in a more environmentally conscious way and in a more energy efficient way. And so since then, we've uh, really engaged and involved in the fight against climate change. And you know, we're also a union that organizes. We're organizing fast food workers, airport workers, et cetera. And since we started engaging in climate, you know, the inequality crisis has exploded. Um, it's not anything new to us. We know what inequality is like. We work for sort of the titans of real estate. Um, but that's exploded. And then our members are, as I said, primarily immigrants, people of color, who are impacted by racial injustice and sort of the, the continued rise of white supremacy every day. And so when the Green New Deal came out in the end of November, it was this moment of, wow, here is an actual policy blueprint, a vision for what our economy and world could look like if we tackle the climate crisis, economic inequality, and racial injustice all at the same time. This is, we, we got to be involved in this. We want to get engaged. And so we reached out to the Sunrise Movement folks and um, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez's office and started a conversation because we did want to make sure as we were getting engaged that the issue of workers who are currently working in fossil fuel reliant uh, industries and who live in fossil fuel reliant communities would be front and center in the conversation as you move forward on the Green New Deal. And um, 
and you know we got the insur assurances that we need and so came on board as of the coalition uh, towards the end of December and then as Adam said uh, in spent about six months working to get the rest of SEIU to get on board as well and you know our role is unique because we aren't you know the labor movement talked about sort of the role of the labor movement in this coalition and in the issue of climate change you know the labor movement is not a monolithic set of individuals or organizations you know every industry has its own culture and um, style based somewhat on the way the industry is set up um, public sector workers construction workers building service workers you know fossil fuel coal workers etc and so it's not about sort of creating one way the entire labor movement can be comfortable or participate together in the fight against climate change or in the Green New Deal, it's around making sure that workers' voices are heard, whether they're in a union or not in a union, whether they are directly impacted as somebody who relies on the fossil fuel industry for their livelihood, or somebody who's directly impacted because the increased climate crises and climate disasters are impacting their ability to have a livelihood. Right? It's important that workers' voices are heard throughout. And so what we've done over the past um, eight or nine months is partner with Sunrise, partner with uh, CJA and some of the um, environmental justice organizations at the local level, uh, at the national level, to say, how can we help? You know, we have an obligation and imperative to first and foremost engage our own members and make sure our members understand what the Green New Deal is about, why it's important, what the vision, as I said, of our sort of economic future can be that's inclusive and um, deals with their sort of immediate real world crises and make sure that their children have a planet to live on, right? So we've done that work and continue to do that work and that work is gonna always be ongoing. And then we sit at coalition tables with um, you know, environmental justice groups, with the big green folks, with community organizations, with um, you know, we engage in partisan politics. So with, you know, the Working Families Party or um, friendly elected officials, et cetera, to think about, okay, we know what the, the Green New Deal is a vision. I think the speaker before me talked about the need to both maintain the sort of uh, ongoing narrative drumbeat in the media and do the very time-consuming, difficult, grassroots, coalition building and organizing at the same time. And so in addition to that, you also have to sort of have the institutional political power to get in the room with the decision makers and to have them feel like, and I know this is probably a the church, so I don't wanna to be too partisan, but have them feel like their elections are at stake if they don't act. And that is one thing that the union can really help on because we mobilize, we engage in elections. And so, you know, throughout the uh, last nine months and as we move forward into sort of 2020 and beyond, we are really working with the different partners to identify and figure out, you know, what is our strategic value to a coalition? How do we engage our members most effectively to move the ball forward? What is somebody else's strategic value? How are we different? How can our differences and strengths actually um, align with one, each other, one another and build upon one another? to um, make sure that if there is a different political reality in January 2021, that we will actually be in a position to pass the um, components of a Green New Deal and enact the most comprehensive um, climate, uh, economic, and racial uh, policy change that you know we've ever seen in this country. So that's what we're doing.